Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Good morning. Sunday morning. Amen. Um, last Sunday in July. Praise the Lord. Uh, we continue to search out God. Amen. Amen. Pray everybody had a good week. Um, pray everybody's feeling well this morning. Amen. That you had a good night's sleep. You know that the Bible actually has scriptures for sleep? Yep. Amen. Um, the Bible says that uh, God said that He that He will make our sleep sweet. Amen. Yes. Um, it is God who makes us lay down and sleep and get rest. So I pray that if you're having any trouble sleeping, Amen. Just you know, stand on some scripture. Now somebody say, oh, "Stand on scripture." That sounds so easy to do. Nobody says easy, right? But we do contend for the faith, amen. And and the word of God is the source of our faith, and so we got to contend for it. We got to fight for it, because when you lay hold of a word, the enemy wants to try to take it from you, amen. Amen. And so there's a fight that goes on immediately when you say, "I'm going to believe God in this area of my life," whether it's for sleep, whether it's for provision, whether it's for healing, whether it's for protection, whether it's for finances relationship a marriage a child amen if you're believing on god for it to um to have a child you got to fight for it amen you got to contend for the faith amen um and so um just to, but but contend though amen um amen. fight for it. it it's it's worth it it's your life fight for what you want glory to god amen fight for what you want amen and so praying that um you know you're doing well on this morning um and that um praying even more that as a result of being here together for a few minutes on this sunday morning that you will be doing even better when you leave when we leave yes. amen amen how many of you know that when you come on the scene as a child of god Things should get better, <laughs> glory to God, amen. not worse. Amen. Mm -hmm. When we come, amen, and we leave, things should be better than when we came. Amen. Um, and so we're, we're praying that today for you um, and for all of us. Amen. Um, glory to God. This morning, we're going to go to the book of Numbers. Uh, so we're going to go into the Old Testament, the book of Numbers, chapter 32. And... Praise God for his word. Amen. And I praise God for the way he communicates. I like the way God communicates. Amen. The way he speaks. My wife, um, when she sends out emails um, or blogs and things like that, often says God is real. Mm -hmm. um, God is real. Amen. Amen. He's a real God, a real person. He's authentic. He doesn't fake. Amen. He, he's, he's real in so many ways. And so we praise God that we have a real God giving us a real word uh, to deal with our real problems on this morning. Amen. And it's going to be in Numbers chapter 32. And so let's turn there and we're going to start reading at verse number one uh, and we'll go down until, amen, we stop. <laughs> praise God. Amen. amen. So let's, let's go, amen, together. Uh, Numbers 32, verse 1. It says, Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest, and said unto the princes of the congregation, saying, Adaroth and Dibon and Jazer and Nimrah and Heshbon and Eliah and Shabam and Nebo and Beon, even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. Wherefore, they said, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for possession, and bring us not over Jordan. And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall ye sit here? 
Amen. Amen. Let's stop there. Amen. Praise God for the reading of the word. Um, our title today is Slow Your Roll. Amen. Slow Your Roll. R-O-L-L. For anyone who may be from some place other than places where they speak that way. Amen. Amen. Slow Your Roll. R-O-L-L. Amen. Slow your roll. Let's pray today. Father, we bless your name. Yes, and Father. we thank you, God, that you are a real God, that yes. you are the true thank and God. living God, that you are the God of life, the God of strength, the God of all comfort. And Father, we come to you now, God, seeking your word, for you also are a God of wisdom. Yes. Fill our hearts with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Bless us with revelation. Let the light go on yes, in our Father, soul in the name you. of Jesus Christ. And Father God, lead us in the way everlasting. And Father, we submit to you right now. We resist the enemy. We will try to interfere with what you desire to speak and to get to yes, us today. God, thank you. We believe we receive everything that you have for us. And so we thank you for it. Father, thank you for blessing your people. And thank you for blessing me, O oh God, to be used by you, that you may be glorified. Uh, may you be exalted in the eyes of the people. And may, and may we all be built up in our most holy faith. We bless you for it. We call it done. We give you praise in Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Slow your roll. God is saying unto us on this morning, this Sunday morning, last Sunday in July. Amen. Amen. Our story today, amen, um, is coming at a point in time when the children of Israel are getting close to the promise. They're getting close to inheriting the promise. Yes. And as they get close, it appears as if some trouble is brewing. And, you know, that is often the case, that when we get close to our promise in God, trouble begins to brew. Mm -hmm. Things begin to occur disruptions come into our lives upsets visit us people start acting the fool things try to distract us and get us off point all because we're getting close to the promise um you know we often talk about the disciplines of god and the, and the christian disciplines that we need to have and one of the times we need to be most disciplined is when we get close to the promise. Mm. Because, see, you put in your time. You've prayed. You've fasted. You've sought the Lord. You've obeyed his voice. You've made sacrifices. You've served him and you've served others. You've done all these things. And you stood fast on the word of God. You stood fast on the promises of God. You continue to confess and make your professions. You've done all those things and, you know, time has gone on and now you're coming close to the promise and the enemy of your soul, amen, doesn't, he never goes away permanently, no. right? The enemy came to Jesus in the wilderness and he tempted our Lord. If thou be the son of God, turn this, these stones into bread, amen. Um, turn it into food. If thou be the son of God, jump down from here. If thou be the son of God, worship me. He tempted Jesus in the wilderness. And Jesus rebuked him by the word. We know that. And the Bible says that Satan then left him for a season. Mm -hmm. He left him for a more opportune time to come back. He always comes back. Pharaoh let the people of Israel go. And then he came chasing after him. Why? Because the devil always comes back. That demon got kicked out of the man. Mm -hmm. Right? Jesus told the story. He got kicked out of the man and he wandered in a dry place. Couldn't find anything. And what did he do? He went back to the man he got kicked out of, bringing yeah. seven other demons with him. And it says that the end of that man was worse than his beginning. Yeah. The devil always comes back. And so you've fought the good fight of faith and you've, you've done all these things and now you're coming close to your promise. Don't believe that the devil's just going to let you walk into it. Amen. Amen. He's going to come back. 
-hmm. And he's going to fight you for it. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's going to try to keep you from getting it. And, you know, so when you get close to your promise, amen, be even more vigilant than ever before. When you can see it in view, that's not the time to get all happy. That's the time for you to be sober and really and, and understand that he's going to make one last gasp to try to get you off your point. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just when that 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 boy was going to be uh, uh, delivered from that demon that the father said, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Just when that boy was about to be delivered, the devil tried one last time to destroy that boy, throwing him on the ground and convulsing him, right? So the devil always going to come, especially when you're close to your promise. Yes. And so you got to be careful, amen. If it's in view, then then don't, don't put down your spiritual guard, amen. Continue to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so the people of Israel were... You know, nation of Israel were about to come into their promise, and it seems as if something's coming up. And what, what what's coming up here? It tells us in the scripture text that the children of Reuben, who was Jacob's oldest son, and the children of Gad, they had a lot of cattle. And, you know, they were on the other side, Jordan. They hadn't yet to cross over uh, into the land of promise. And they went to Moses and said, you know what, Moses? This land over here is good for us. So we'd, we'd rather just stay and, and, and have this land. Don't take us over the other side, Jordan, right? We, 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 we'd stay right here on the east side. You, you don't have to take us over into the west side of Jordan. And Moses responded by saying, he said, should, should your brethren, should everybody else go and fight while you sit here? Hmm. See, because it should be a corporate fight. Amen. It should be a corporate fight. We're in this together. Yes. Family should be fighting together. And how do you fight? You fight through prayer. Family should be fighting together. Churches should be fighting together, not against one another. Hmm. And so Moses wanted to know, should your brethren go to war and ye sit here? And then... Um, he said in, in, in verse 7, he said, Wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given them? Thus did your fathers when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. And when they went up into the valley of Eshcol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. Mm. So Moses said to them, why are you going to discourage the people? <laughs> yeah. We're about to go into the promise and now you're going to bring this discouragement into the camp by saying you don't want to go over. He said, why are you going to do that? And then he reminded them, this is the same thing that happened when I sent out the, the 12 spies mm -hmm. to spy out the land. 10 of them came back with a bad report and that bad report discouraged the people and we got to be careful about this because you know and this is why we have to keep our own vessels because if, if if we don't keep our vessels and we're not strong in the lord when when we're trying to accomplish and, and or there's you know your family's trying to accomplish the church is trying to accomplish maybe you know, you have business partners or whatever, whatever it is, you have some project going on, you're trying to accomplish. If each one doesn't keep their vessel mm -hmm. strong, then they can spread a seed of discouragement very quickly. And I want to let you know, discouragement, discouragement is contagious. And, and it's easier to discourage someone than it is to encourage someone. Encouraging someone is hard. But discouraging someone is not so hard. All you have to do to discourage someone is to bring negativity and, 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 and lack of insight and, you know, um, lack of vision. And people can get discouraged. And that's what happened. That's what happened here. In fact, let's turn to, um, it's, it's still in the book of Numbers, but it's in Numbers chapter, chapter 13. But Moses talked about how I sent you guys out. And you came back, you know, not you, but 10 of the spies came back with evil reports. Mm -hmm. And so in Numbers chapter 13, 
you remember the story. Moses sent out the spies to spy out the land of Canaan. Twelve of them, one from each tribe. Ten came back with an evil report. Only Joshua and Caleb had a good report. Mm -hmm. Verse 25. And they returned after searching the land forty days. And when they came, uh, and, and, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them. And they showed them the fruit. And they said, Then we came unto the land whither you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of this, of it. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The children of Anak were giants. Mm -hmm. The Amalekites dwell there, Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Canaanites, they all dwell there. And in verse 30, Caleb stilled the people because he understood the people are starting to get discouraged by this negative talking. So Caleb interjected and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. See, Caleb was walking in faith. How do you know? Because he was saying, let us go up when? Tomorrow? No, let us go up at once. Now faith is. Amen. Faith is now. He was he was in faith. He was saying, let us go up right now and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. Now, the, the ten spies get criticized a lot, and rightfully so, in my opinion. Amen. Because <laughs> uh, they came back with this negative report. But it's not that everything they said was not true. Oh, yeah. um, in, in verse 31, they said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And on that point right there, the ten spies were right. Mm -hmm. The children of Anak were bigger than them. Right. The children of Anak were stronger than them. The children of Anak were mightier than them. But they weren't mightier than their God. No. And that's where they lost it, right? That they were looking at their situation through the lens of themselves. And when they did that, they came up small. Mm. And see, that's what happens with us. When we look at our situation through the lens of ourselves, we're going to come up small. We're going to come up short. Mm -hmm. We're going to come up and then be discouraged because it's going to appear that we can't deal with that situation. The situation is too big for us. The people are too many for us. The mountain is too tall for us. Whatever the situation is, if we look at it through the lens of ourselves, then we're going to come up small and short. And, and, and that's why we, we, that's not how we're supposed to look, right? I will lift up my eyes where? To the hills from yes. whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. You know, Isaiah made a, a, a promise in Isaiah 26 and 3. He said that, that he, God, will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed yeah. on him. Yes. Not on yourself. If we think too much about ourselves and our situation, we're not going to be in perfect peace. In fact, we're going to probably be filled with anxiety, worry, and fear. Because as we look at life through the prism and through the lens of ourselves, we're not a match for it. We're not. There's too much going on. There are too many giants in the land. Yes. But none of those giants and none of those things that are going on are greater than the God we serve. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep our eyes on God. Part of their problem was that they were looking at themselves. Mm -hmm. Stop looking at yourself so much and put your eyes on the God you serve. Amen. Amen. Stop looking at you and look at the God that's in you. Amen. The writer of Hebrews said what? Looking unto Jesus, yes. the author Amen. and finisher of our faith. Stop looking at yourself. Stop <laughs> looking at people. Look unto Jesus. Look unto the Lord. So let's, let's continue on. So in verse 32, they brought up an evil report of the land which they searched, saying... The land that we search, the inhabitants there is a land that eateth up the inhabitants and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and 
So we were in their sight. And what happened? Let's look at this. So now look at this evil report. And what happened? And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. Yeah. See, you see how discouragement, how 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 it can just go through the camp like a contagion. Mm -hmm. It can just go and spread so quickly. It's a negative report. I'm telling you, and it's, it's part of our fallen nature where we are more inclined to believe the bad than we are to believe the good. Amen. Yeah. It's part of our fallen nature. We're more inclined to believe the bad than we are to believe the good. That's why, for example, you think about this. That's why there's such a phrase as what. It's too good to be true. To be true. See, see, our mind. If it's good, then we think, no, no, no. But, but there's no such saying that that's too bad to be true. So if someone tells you something bad, you go, yeah, I can see that. I can believe that. But someone tells you something good, that's too good to be true. We have an inclination because of our fallen nature to be drawn to the negative, right? That's why we see the negative. Everything about that dress is fine. You see one thing about it and you focus on that. I can't stand this dress. Why? Because of this one little thing. <laughs> right? Our minds, amen, we, we focus on the negative. That's why God is, we're in the process. God said, I need to renew your mind. Amen. Mm -hmm. I need to regenerate your mind. I need you to get to thinking about the goodness of God. Amen. amen. Why? Because we tend to think on negative. So many people woke up this morning and thought about all the things they don't have in their house or all the problems and all the things that they got facing them coming up. But there's blessings in our lives. Those are good things. And you know what we say about blessings? Yeah, 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 I know, but... Yeah. See, we just, we just want to go to the negative. Mm -hmm. We just want to go to the negative. And so you got to understand, when people have a natural inclination toward negative and someone starts talking negative, mm -hmm. they're speaking to that natural inclination and people grab it like, like hotcakes. Yeah. And it spreads. Amen. And that's what happened here. The congregation lifted up their voice and they cried and the people wept. And all the children murmured against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, look at this. Would God we had died in the land of Egypt. Or would God we had died in this wilderness. And why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? Our wives, our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? Let us make us a captain and return to Egypt. Look how they're talking. They're talking mm -hmm. foolishness mm -hmm. now. It'd be better if we died. Let us go back to that former life of bondage that we mm -hmm. had. Let's go back into slavery. Let's go back into oppression. Let's go back into addiction. Let's bring it up to current times. Amen. Let's go back to just running the streets. Let's go back to wow. being out there. No. <laughs> Amen. Don't let your spirit get discouraged because discouragement leads us to start saying foolish things. Amen. Amen. And so they were discouraged so much they wanted to go back into bondage. And so Moses, mindful of this, he's saying to, to Reuben and, uh, and to Gad, and, and, and it also was the half-tribe of Manasseh, he said to them, he said, why are you trying to discourage your brethren, amen, by not wanting to go over to the other side? Right, and let's talk about encouragement for a second because it is harder to encourage someone than it is to discourage someone. As I said, we have a natural inclination toward right. discouragement, mm -hmm. and and we have to stop here for a second. Thank God for this, Amen. Because see, there are so many people, so many children of God, who who live in the kingdom, right? You're a kingdom child. You live in the kingdom. You're a citizen of heaven. But you actually dwell on the border of discouragement. Hmm. Right? You're a child of God. Amen? You're saved. You're a kingdom kid. You're a citizen of heaven. But you live on the border of discouragement. Hmm. And you know how you know you live on the border of discouragement? It doesn't take that much to get you into the land of discouragement. So, for example, a, a bill comes and it's higher than you thought. Mm. And you go into the land of discouragement. You turn on your car. Glory to God. The check engine light comes on. 
You're in the line of discouragement. <laughs> you post something on social media and not enough people like it. And you're in the land of discouragement. Right? It doesn't take much to get you into the land of discouragement. And if that's the case, you need to understand you're living too close to the border of discouragement. Wow. You need to take up stakes and move deeper into the land that flows with milk and honey. You, you, you're too close, amen, because small things get you discouraged because you're so close that it just tips you over. Amen. You're straddling the borderline between the kingdom and discouragement, encouragement and discouragement. And, and, and something happens and you tip over into a place called discouragement. You're too close to the border. You need to move inland. Amen. You need to move deeper into the land Jesus. that flows with milk and honey. So we need to encourage people because, you know, as I said, I mean, even people of God don't have enough encouragement. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, you know, it, it, they don't have enough encouragement. And I believe it comes from a number of factors, but part of it is is, is expectancy. What do you expect yes. to happen in your life? Do you expect good? Amen. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the... See, that's expectancy. Amen. Expectancy keeps you from fainting because you believe you will see the goodness of the Lord in your lifetime. Yeah. Amen. Expectancy. Expectancy. Amen. Because, see, part of being, a, you know, walking in faith is having that spirit of expectancy. I expect things to mm. work out. I expect to come out on top. I expect it. Now... Does it always happen? Of course it does not. Amen. But here's the thing. But if you're a child of the king and you're living in the kingdom, not on the border of discouragement, in the kingdom, when things don't work out, you're so surrounded by God and the kingdom of God and the things of God, you don't immediately get discouraged because you're so far from the border of discouragement. Amen. Right. You may be disappointed, but you're not discouraged. There's a difference between being disappointed and being discouraged. I can be disappointed that something didn't work out. And that disappointment is but for a moment. And then I immediately, because I'm living deep in the kingdom of God, and I'm surrounded by many cloud of witnesses. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm surrounded by this cloud of witnesses and I'm surrounded by the presence of God and his grace compasses me, surrounds me as a shield. Yes. Amen. That, yeah, I may get disappointed, but I don't get discouraged because I'm, I'm surrounded. I'm, I'm deep in the kingdom of God. Right, so you can get disappointed because yes. everything doesn't work out. But I'm, but discouragement's a different thing. Discouragement has you saying, "I want to go back to the time when I wasn't saved." Yeah, <laughs> I want to go back to the way I used to live. I want to go back to the world and the way the world does things. See, discouragement leads you there. Disappointment doesn't lead you there. Disappointment may be the precursor to discouragement, but you can be disappointed. But if you're surrounded by this many cloud of witnesses, your faith can be built up again because you're still coming to church. You're still coming to Bible study. You're still reading. You're still praying. You're still fasting. You're still serving. Yes. right? Because you're still in the kingdom. You're still doing kingdom things. Yes. And, and then before long, that disappointment dissipates. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You wake up and you're ready to go back at them again. That's how you live by faith because faith has expectancy. And expectancy is 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 hope, yeah. right? And hope is not wishing, not biblical hope. Biblical hope is not wishing. Biblical hope is a confident expectation. Hmm? It's confident expectation. The writer of Hebrews even says that we have need of confidence. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, Hebrews chapter 10. The writer of Hebrews says... Oh, it says this, cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward. Mm -hmm. See, that's 10 and 35. Don't fling away your fearless confidence because it carries a great and glorious compensation of mm -hmm. reward. See, expectation has reward. Amen. Um, For ye have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So expectation has confidence amen and and that confidence fills you with hope in fact paul said in romans chapter 15 he said he was saying he prayed that the god of hope he said let the god of hope 
Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Fill you with with joy and peace in believing. Amen. See, when you believe, there's a joy and peace in believing. Glory yeah. to God for mm-hmm. that. See, see, so believing, this is why the devil doesn't want you to believe the word of God. He wants to strip you of joy and peace. Joy and peace comes from believing. Yes. And Paul said, let the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing. So when you have that expectation, when you have that faith, when you have that hope, amen, from the God of hope, you're filled with joy and peace as you stand there believing, yes. I'm going to get what God has for me, amen. But man, it's hard to get there. It's hard to get people there sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. you know, because you know, like I said, this natural inclination toward the negative and discouragement. Sometimes you got to pull people. But see, that's okay. But we got to pull for each other. Amen. And we sometimes we got to pull each other and get, you know, hey, you're in the land of discouragement. You don't belong there. You're a child of the most high God. Come in here to the land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. amen. And you pull them in there. Amen. By by encouraging them in, in the faith. And you got to encourage them in the word. Amen. And so Moses was concerned that 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 the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh were, were discouraging the people. You don't want to go over the Jordan and fight with us for the land. And he said, your fathers did the same thing. Let's look at verse 10. And he said, and the Lord's anger was kindled the same time. This is Moses continuing to talk about what happened the first time around. And he said, the Lord's anger was kindled the same time. And he swears, saying, surely none of the men that came out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, save Caleb and Joshua. So God said, everybody 20 years old and upwards ain't getting in. If you were 19 and a half, Christian... You were happy. You were 19 and a half. You know how kids now, when, when you know, they let you know uh, when they're between ages. How old are you? I'm, I'm 19 and a half. Or they even say, you know, <laughs> I, I'll be 20 in, in, in two months. They want to jump to the, they want to jump to the next age. Mm-hmm. I tell you this right now. There were some kids walking around in the wilderness who were talking about, I'm going to be 20 in two months. And then the minute God said, everybody 20 and older ain't getting in, know what they said? I'm 19. (laughs) (laughs) Don't put me with them. I'm I'm 19. (laughs) Amen. God said, everybody 20 and up not getting in. See, I think God was saying this. There's some people, amen, who've been walking with me long enough. You should know better. Yeah, that's true. If some of you who are old enough, you should know better. And I want you to know, God is saying the same thing to you and to me today. Some of us been walking with God long enough. We should know better. We shouldn't be acting like we're acting. That's true. Certain things don't happen to us, and we act like babes in Christ. You've been walking with God for two, three, four decades. You should know better. Amen. To whom much is given, much is required. Yeah. And over those four decades, three decades of walking with the Lord, that God has God has given you so much of himself. And now he requires certain things of you. What is required of you, old man, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Yeah. Amen. Don't come over here complaining. When the people complain, it displeases the Lord. You should know better. Mm-hmm. We walk by faith, not by sight. Why you keep pointing, trying to get me to look at your problems? You should know better. Mm-hmm. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. There comes a point in time where we just have to look in the mirror and say, look, I, I should know better than this. Mm-hmm. Amen. I shouldn't let everybody's evil comment get me off my mark. I should know better than this. Amen. 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 Some of those same buttons the devil been pushing for for 15 years, you should know better by now. Amen. The devil's coming pushing the same button until you show him that that button that he pushes no longer works. Yeah. See, some of us need to go right now, go get a sign and just put out of order. Just write it down. It's going to encourage you in your spirit. Out of order. 
write that. You ever you ever go like to an ATM or you you know I was standing on the line at BJ's the other day and I wanted to go cash out uh, you know buy uh, you know go to the self service thing but they had a sign on there out of order. The machine was there but I couldn't use it. Why? Because it was out of order. See, but they wrote the sign. Mm -hmm. I knew I couldn't use it. See, we need to write a sign. Somebody needs to really write a sign today because you need to see it and then let it get into your spirit and, and, and say to yourself, this is for the devil. The buttons you've been pushing in me to get me to go crazy, they're out of order. So what, guess what? Stop trying to push it. Amen. They don't work anymore. They're out of order. Amen. Because some of us, come on, man. We, we should know better. We should know better. Amen. Let's stand up to the place because understand God's going to hold us accountable for what we should know. Amen. That's why He said, "Been twenty and all." Because He's saying the younger ones, nah, they they still got some stuff to learn about me. But you guys, you should know better by now. So everybody twenty and up, you ain't getting in. All you cry babies, twenty and up, you ain't getting in. <laughs> Did He say that? I don't know. He said cry baby, but that's amen. He said that to me. You cry baby. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. But come on. We should know better. Amen. Amen. As Pastor Lane said to, to us, as he taught us, amen, do now what you know now, now to, do. to do. Amen. Whatever you know now, do it now. Amen. amen. Yeah, there's going to be some stuff you'll know hereafter, but if you don't know it now, don't worry about hereafter stuff. Do now what you know now to do. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Let, 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 let's let's rise up and, and, and stop living beneath our privileges, living beneath our knowledge, living beneath the things that God has taught us. Amen. amen. And, and, and grabbing on to and holding on to the base things of life. Let's go up higher. Amen. Because uh, God's going to, to hold us accountable. So he said, everybody 20 and older, you ain't getting in except for Caleb and for Joshua. And so Moses is still talking to them. He's still talking to the children of, of Gad and to Reuben and to the half-tribe of Manasseh. And he says, And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years. That's why they wandered, you know. But they were disobedient because they got discouraged when God said, You should know what I'm going to do. He said, You're going to wander into the wilderness until all the generations that have done evil on the sight of the Lord was consumed. Hmm. And then Moses said, And behold, ye are risen up in your father's stead, an increase of sinful men. And now I had to, the New Living Translation actually says that that increase of sinful men, you know what it says? He called them a brood of sinners. <laughs> so <laughs> Moses is hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he said to them, So now here you come. Acting just like your fathers, mm. a brood of sinners. And look what it says. To augment yet the fierce anger of the Lord, saying, you're going to make God even angrier with us than he was with them. Wow. And what did he do with them? He told them, you ain't getting into the promised mm -hmm. land. I'm going to consume every one of you 20 years of older. That's how angry God was. And Moses said, you brood of sinners, you're going to make God angrier with us. Now than he was with them. with them. And you can't blame Moses in a way, right? I mean, mm -hmm. look at what they were doing. We don't want to go over. And so verse 16, verse 15, he says, If you turn away from him again, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness. And you shall destroy all this people. So he was really laying it on thick. Mm -hmm. You do this, and God's going to leave us, everybody here in this wilderness, and everybody going to die in this place because of you. Verse 16. And they, children of Gad and Reuben and half-tribe of Manasseh, they came unto him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and cities and for our little ones. Now, before going forward, you have New Living Translation there? No, I have NIV. You have NIV. What is what is um verse uh seventeen say? But we ourselves will be armed, ready to go before the children of Israel. No, I'm sorry, verse sixteen. 
Then they came near to him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our livestock. Okay. And cities for our little ones. Right. Now, the New Living Translation says, it, has, it adds a word there to show you where they were coming from. Hmm. It says, We simply want to build pens uh, for our livestock. Right? Mm -hmm. And 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 cities for our little ones. So what they said was, Moses, what are you talking about? We never said we weren't going. Right. We just want this land right here. Mm -hmm. We simply want to build pens for our livestock, cities for our children, right? Mm -hmm. But verse seventeen. But we ourselves will go ready, armed before the children of Israel. You know what armed before means? They actually said, we ourselves will lead the children of Israel right. into battle mm -hmm. until we have brought them unto their place. And our little ones shall dwell in the fenced cities because of the inhabitants of the land. But we will not return into our houses until the children of Israel have inherited every man his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on the other side of Jordan because our inheritance has fallen to us on this side of Jordan. Mm. So you know what they said to him? Moses, what are you talking about? Mm. We're asking for this land, not because we don't want to fight. Right. We just want this land. But we're not going to even possess this land. We'll leave our families here and our cattle here, but we're going to lead the children into battle. Mm -hmm. Right? And once we do that, then we can come back. Right. So you know what happened? Moses jumped to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. He jumped to a conclusion. And he wasn't mad at them. But his conclusion made sense. Based on what he heard. Mm -hmm. But he was wrong. His conclusion was logical. But he was wrong. Wow. Right? And how many of us are jumping to conclusions wow. about situations, about people, and even about God, because someone is not acting the way we think they should act. They didn't do what we think they're going to do. We jump to a conclusion about them. Mm -hmm. The situation is looking a certain way. We jump to a conclusion about how it's going to end. God may be slow in moving or hasn't moved or haven't said anything. And we jump to a conclusion even about God. And God is saying to me what my father used to say to me all the time, slow your roll. Amen? Mm -hmm. See, when I got a little bit too fast and I got too ahead of myself and I started thinking a little bit too well of myself and all the rest of that, my dad used to say, all right now, slow your roll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, that's a Brooklyn thing right there, I think. Amen? I don't, they probably say in other parts of the country too, but see, they, my, my dad was from Brooklyn, slow your roll. See, see, they don't talk like that out in the suburbs, amen. That, 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 that's, that's a city mouse thing right there. <laughs> Slow your roll. <laughs> amen. Slow your roll. See, I was born in Brooklyn. I mean, we may be in Jersey, but I'm a New Yorker, amen. amen. I was born in Brooklyn, amen. The first air Christian I breathed in was Brooklyn air, amen. <laughs> I was born in Crown Heights, amen. I breathed, first air I breathed in was Brooklyn air, amen. <laughs> I got Brooklyn in my DNA. Born in Brooklyn, raised in Hollis, Queens. I'm a New Yorker. Amen. <laughs> amen. Your grandmother, amen. She she was born in the Bronx. Spent a lot of time in Brooklyn. She a New Yorker. Amen. amen. We're native New Yorkers, right, babe? Amen. You remember that song, Native New Yorkers? Mm -hmm. You remember that song? Running pretty New York City girl. <laughs> 25, 35, hello baby, New York City girl. No. You don't remember that song? You know that song. I don't know that song. <laughs> you grew up riding the subways. Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay, I remember that. Up in Harlem, down on Broadway, <laughs> you're no tramp, but you're no lady. Oh God. Talking that sweet talk. <laughs> You're the heart and soul of New York City. Yeah. Oh, that was a jam right there. <laughs> Native New Yorker. Y'all don't know that song. Hey, Amen. They don't know that song. Y'all don't know that song. And see, somebody might get mad right here. Glory to God for this. Somebody might get mad. Wait a minute. You supposed to be, you supposed to be speaking a message. Why are you bringing in that secular song? Let me tell you something. Glory to God. 
glory to God. Now, let's get serious for a minute because, see, this got to be addressed sometime. Sometimes folk in church are too uptight. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, 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 you know, like everything got to be James Cleveland, Walter Hawkins, Richard Small. Well, you act like you don't know no other songs. <laughs> you act like you never done nothing. You act like you never smoked a blunt. You act oh, like Jesus. you never drank a 40. You act like you never was in the club. You act like you was never running the streets. And see, here's the thing. God brought you out of that. So that's not you. But see, you got to be careful of trying to get, just not remember some of the things where you came from. Because God allowed you to go through that because someone's going to come across your path who has a shared experience. Amen. And you're going to be able to speak to them from the, from the authenticity of your shared experience. Exactly. But only if you remember Amen. it. If you want to now act like you're too good for that, you all sedity and everything, then now that person comes across your path and you speak and they ain't hearing you. But see, Paul said, Amen. To the Jew, I became like a Jew. To the one under the law, I became like under the law. To the weak, I became weak. He said what? He said, he said what? He said, because I became all things to all men that I might thereby save some. some. Yep. See, so some of the things that we've gone through in our life is so that when we come across somebody who has a shared experience, who's, who's out there in the wilderness, we can speak to them as a child of God, but someone who knows what it's like that what they're doing right now. I, I know what it's like, man, to yeah. be out there on the street like that. I know what it's like to be running around from 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 guy to guy because I used to do that too. I know what it's like. Amen. But if you're going to be so busy trying to act like you don't do that because all you know is the church. Listen, oh, these people, I grew up in the church. You ain't grow up in the church. You grew up in sin, amen? Because, <laughs> no, because David said, I was shaping in iniquity and conceived Amen. in sin. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes. We need to bring it yes. down. All glory to God for saving us. Mm. But don't act like you don't know that song, Native New Yorker. I know that song. You should know <laughs> the score by now. You're a Native New Yorker. Somebody's going to go Google that thing, aren't you? Yeah, you know, God know what you're thinking. But come Amen. on. Don't, 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 don't just discard everything you've gone through and act like you don't know it. Amen. Amen. Because see, That's that right. thing's going to gonna come in handy one of these days when God sends across your path somebody who has a shared experience with what you've gone through and what he's delivered you from. But if you're so busy trying to act like you don't ever, you don't know anything, that you've always been on this narrow path, then okay, God will use other people. Amen. 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 God will right. use other people. Use like like, like Mordecai said to Esther, don't think for a minute, amen, that if you don't do it, God's not going to save that person. Amen. But he, he'll, he'll, he'll raise up somebody else. Yes, but how many of you know that he might have saved you for just a time and a person as this who's standing before you? Amen. Amen. Bottom line, let's get back to the sermon. Amen. Okay. That was already in progress. Amen. He jumped to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. And so many of us are jumping to conclusions. And, and, and we got to stop jumping to, to those conclusions. We got to stop... You know, looking at the surface of the facts and saying, this is it. And this is the end of the matter. Slow your roll. Yes. You know, stop doing it. Um, Proverbs 25 and 8. Proverbs 25 and 8 says this. It says, it says, uh, don't jump to conclusions. This is the message version. Proverbs 25 and 8. It says, don't jump to conclusions. There may be a perfectly good explanation for what you just saw. Hmm. That's the word of God. Don't jump to a conclusion. There may be a perfectly good explanation for what you just saw. And it could be something that you're not thinking about. See, Moses immediately thought that the children of Reuben and Gad and Manasseh, half-tribe of Manasseh, didn't want to go over to the promised land because they didn't want to help them fight for the land. And that was never their intention. And you know what's interesting, too? Is that later on, in the book of Joshua, chapter 22, after, every, after they, everybody got their land, 
Mm-hmm. Gad, Reuben, and the half tribe of Manasseh, they, caught, they went back across the Jordan. And when they got across the Jordan, they built an altar. Right. Mm -hmm. and, 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 when, and when the other tribes on the west side of Jordan heard that they built an altar, it said they geared up for war because they just thought that now they were wanting to worship God and separate themselves from them. Hmm. So they had, they built up for war, and then they sent Phinehas, and, and uh, I think it was Phinehas, they sent the leaders over to say, what is this that you're doing? Right? Hmm. They jumped to a conclusion. And you know what they told them? They said, no, we, we don't want to. That's not why we built the altar. We built the altar because we're concerned that when our children grow up, that everybody over there is going to say our children has no part with them. Hmm. And so we wanted to build an altar here to show we don't want to make sacrifices on it. Right. We want to show that we belong yes. to the people on the other side of Jordan. Amen. So once again, it was a conclusion that was reached. And once yes. they realized what was in their heart, they said, oh, this is a good day now. Mm -hmm. Come on, people. We got to stop jumping to conclusions. Mm -hmm. How many people have you gotten mad at only to find out that what you were thinking about them, that's not what they were doing. Wow. That's not what they were thinking. How many situations that you just, just jumped to a conclusion that you knew wasn't going to work out or was going to work out this way or the other way, and that's not how it... Stop jumping to conclusions. Mm -hmm. And some of us are even jumping to conclusions about God. Yeah. Amen? We're jumping to conclusions about God. And you see it all throughout the Bible. Amen? Job's friends jumped to a conclusion about why Job was suffering. Mm -hmm. You must have did something. <laughs> and okay. we know... That's not what the case is. We read, this, we read the story, right? right? They found out later. But what did they do? They jumped to a conclusion. All throughout the Bible. Don't jump to a conclusion, amen? Because it, it may be logical. It may make sense. But it may not be true. Right. Slow your roll, amen? Who sinned? <laughs> this man or his parents that he was born blind? <laughs> conclusion. Mm -hmm. Jesus said what? Neither this man nor his, uh, his parents sinned. Mm -hmm. But that the glory of God, the works of God, might be made manifest in him. Amen. We got to stop jumping to conclusions. Jesus told them, you think that the, when the Tower of Siloam fell on those 18 people and killed them, that they were greater sinners than everybody else? He said, I say to you not. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So listen, so let's not come to a conclusion. So right now, someone needs to know, slow your roll. You've jumped to a conclusion about something that you're in right now, and you've already concluded how it's going to work out. That's not how it's going to work out. Amen? Amen. You come to a conclusion about somebody, everything. Take a step back. Take a deep breath. Amen? Slow your roll. And, and check yourself to see whether or not you've jumped two steps ahead. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now have concluded the whole matter. Without letting it play out. Yes. Because some of us are impatient enough to let it play out. Right? And I know everything doesn't work out the way we want. Right? Right. But the Bible, even, even, but see, some things don't work out the way we want. But all things work together for the good. Right. including the things that didn't work out. That's the funny thing about it, right? Because if all things work together for the good, that includes some of the things that don't work out. Right. <laughs> Amen. So just because one thing or a couple of things didn't work out doesn't mean that the whole thing won't work together for good. Amen. We have to, we, we, we have to slow our roll. Jeremiah 29 and 11, the Lord said, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. Amen. To give you a hope and a future, a future and a hope. Amen. Mm -hmm. Understand, amen, that, that, you know, it's only God that sees the end from the beginning, not us. Amen. And let him tell the story, amen. right? Mm -hmm. Let him tell the story. And so listen, we need to slow our roll. Let's, let's not try to be so fast and, and get to the conclusion of the matter. Amen. The, um, um, you know, sometimes we get upset too. And, and the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 7 and 9 that anger rests in the bosom of fools. Right? Mm -hmm. That don't be so hasty to get mad. 
because anger rests in the bosom of fools. So many of us, we get mad at our situation, get mad at life, get mad at people, get mad at God, but we're hasty. Mm. You know, we're hasty. Slow your roll. Slow down. Hold on a minute. Take a 20 second time out. Chill. <laughs> Amen. Stop. Whatever your word of choice is, but slow down. Amen. Right? And know that God is a good God and He's 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 working things together for good. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus told the disciples, Amen, when after He fed, after He taught the, the people, and He knew they were hungry. Mm-hmm. And He said, He said to them, they, they came to Jesus and they said, Listen, He said, They said, The people are hungry and it's getting late. And they have a long way to go. Send them away. <laughs> Send them away that they may get something to eat. Right? Mm-hmm. And Jesus said, you feed them. Yeah. And they immediately start jumping to conclusions, right? We don't have enough money to feed them. He didn't say anything right. about money. No, but they jumped to a conclusion. Mm-hmm. 200 penny worth would not be enough to even get everyone a bite. Right? But what happened? Jesus fed them. All he wanted them to do was to get with him yeah. in faith, believing that all these people can be fed. Right. And what mm-hmm. happened? With two fish and five loaves of bread, everybody ate as much right. as they wanted, right. and they had leftovers. But see, they jumped to a conclusion. Mm-hmm. We don't have enough. How many people right now jump to a conclusion? You don't have enough. Thank God that woman with the oil, with the meal, what she mm-hmm. had? She had oil? No, yeah. A little meal. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm getting confused. Yeah, the woman are. who had a little oil, mm-hmm. right? Where she came to, to Elisha and said, they're going to take my son. He said, what do you have in your house? Right. She said, I have nothing. Save a little oil. Amen. Mm-hmm. Save a little oil. And that little oil ended up being more than enough. Yep. Amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank God she didn't just come to a conclusion that her sons were going into slavery. Amen. 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 So don't conclude your matter. Amen. Slow down and realize it's only God who tells us the end. Amen. Amen. Let's not jump to conclusions. And if you're going to jump to a conclusion, jump to this conclusion. God is true. God is faithful. God is just. God is good. Always that conclusion is right. Right. But if you can, if you go there, then that's going to help you with your with better decision making. But many times when we do jump to a conclusion, you know what? Most of the time, it's negative. Yeah. We think the worst of a person, we think the worst of a situation, and we even think the worst of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So let's look for revelation and not conclusions. Amen. Praise God for this. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get ready to leave. Amen. Amen. Me and my native New Yorker wife. (laughs) Amen. That's a blast from the past right there. Yes, it is. Native New Yorker. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's pray today. Father, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. Glory to God. Yes, Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Father, for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you, God, for sharing with us what you have shared with us on today. We pray, God, that this word that you have sown in our spirit, God, that we will guard it now. Yes. Because we know that the enemy will come quickly trying to snatch it away from us. But, Father God, we rebuke him now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. We plead the blood of Jesus against him, O oh God. And, Father, we pray that we will hold on to this word, that the Holy Spirit will water it, and that it will uh, bear much fruit in yes. our lives. And, Father, we thank you for it by faith in the name of Jesus. Yes. God, we pray that you will continue to be glorified in our midst, be glorified in the earth. Father, we yes, magnify Lord, you. We you. bless you because you are good. And, Father, we just thank you once again for all that you've done, all that you're doing. And by faith, we thank you for what you're going to do. And, Father, we give you the praise for everything right now. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name.